Singapore is a well-developed country marked by its wide array of skyscrapers and modern architecture. However, the country's progress into a vibrant economic hub would not have existed today without the blood, sweat and tears of migrant workers who will leave their families behind to work in our city-state. This episode looks into the poor living conditions of migrant workers, its implications and possible solutions. Migrant workers are foreigners who leave their homeland to find a job and earn a living at another country. Foreigners talking about any foreigner, like expatriates or maids. We're focusing on those who are often paid very little, with their monthly income ranging from $600 to $800 on average. They are the construction workers who live in dormitories all around Singapore. Migrant workers are still being mistreated. The uninhabitable state of their dormitories are sometimes neglected by their employers and unknown to many members of society. To understand this situation better, let's examine it in detail. Most dormitories of migrant workers are overcrowded and diseases spread easily because of the close proximity. This can cause migrant workers to fall ill, posing a health risk to them. On July 30, 2015, an inspection of Blue Star's dormitory on Kian Tech Lane by the Ministry of Manpower along the Singapore Civil Defence Force found out that 5,042 foreign workers were residing in a dormitory that was permitted to house only 4,500 workers. Since many dormitories are commercial, how do employers keep these housing costs low? They squeeze as many migrant workers as possible into a dormitory. Such cramped living spaces is not only uncomfortable, but it poses a great fire hazard as there is little space to run in the event of a fire. Such tightly packed dormitories may cause fires to spread more easily. Additionally, meals prepared for these workers are often of low quality. To save food costs, employers order food in bulk from the cheapest caterer or prepare the food in their kitchen, which only costs about $5. The food is delivered the night before to reduce delivery costs. During surprise visits conducted by the Migrants Workers Centre on August 13, 2016, at apartments along Geylang Lorong 13 and 17, it was found out that workers were served food that were prepared up to more than 12 hours in advance. Such rancid food is infested with germs and bacteria and may cause the workers to fall ill easily. The food also lacks essential nutrients. Most packed food only contain a pile of rice and some tin meat or curry, which are insufficient for their physically demanding jobs. These migrant workers in the construction industry toil tirelessly to build the buildings and houses we work and live in. As such, we should be concerned about their living conditions. I visit Migrant Worker Centre to find out about their views on the matter. And since 1st of January 2017, it has actually been extended to all dormitories. So the four conditions that all dormitories must take into account is <coughs> one sick day room mm. for every 1,000 workers. So if the dormitory has 6,000, then it's six rooms. Mm. Then three Wi-Fi in all the common areas. Third, <coughs> one locker for every migrant worker. Mm. And of course, the hotline or any complaints or feedback. Mm. At the same time, you have the legal dormitories. So employers, you know, if they want to maximize profit or whatever not, then the house workers in those spoke up apartments, you know, overcrowding and all. As Mr. Ethan Gunn mentioned, the standards of most dormitories have improved greatly in recent years due to the government's efforts. However, there will still be employers who disregard the workers' living conditions, such as in illegal dormitories. So why should Singaporeans even be concerned? Because they are as human as any of us. They come here, they help us in building our country. You know, they do the jobs that Singaporeans don't want to do. And if that's the case, aren't they then uh, entitled? Humanity. The lack of action on the part of Singaporeans will portray Singapore in a bad light at a global scale. Singaporeans may be seen as ignorant and an uncaring or indifferent society towards the plight of foreign workers. This will affect Singapore's reputation in the aspect of workplace welfare, which deters outside investment and foreign workers from applying to work in Singapore. This directly implicates the economical growth of the country, and Singaporeans should be concerned. To prevent these, Something has to be done to the poor living conditions of migrant workers and here's how you can play your part. Firstly, you can volunteer at non-governmental organisations to help migrant workers achieve their right of a decent living environment. 
volunteers can follow NGOs to conduct monthly checks on dormitories with prior training. If it is found that the living conditions of a dormitory is not up to standards, we can surface the issue to the NGOs, who can speak up to the Ministry of Manpower. Being part of NGOs also allows you to advocate for and spread awareness to the public through NGO websites and events. Secondly, it's all about having empathy and acceptance towards the foreign workers. Because every worker similar to us has a story. Even twins have their own different stories. So it's about humanizing, empathizing, getting to know them as not just one out of one copy. It is important to build such a culture of empathy and acceptance in society. This can place societal pressure on dormitory companies to give migrant workers better living conditions. This is how we can all play an active role in improving their living conditions. Migrant workers are also humans. Like all of us, they deserve decent living conditions. This concludes today's episode. I am Warren Wong. Catch you on the next episode.